Hello, this culture fan here, or Dave, here in Texas, and uh, thought I would enter a uh, submission to Steve Carlson's uh, current 200 subs. Uh, I'll leave a link below if you'd like to enter and uh, enter his contest. Uh, he goes by the name of Vinyl Community, Steve Carlson, and uh, I've seen some, uh, quite a few of his videos. I don't always leave a comment, but uh, I enjoy them. He seems like a pretty upbeat guy, which I like, and uh, he has a wide range of musical tastes, too, which I also like, and it seems like he's been collecting a while. So um, his videos are fun to watch and uh, interesting as well. And uh, he wants you to list five albums that, uh, you know, make you happy, that you find are interesting. And I guess that could also be like five of your favorite albums of all time or anything like that. But uh, these are indeed five albums that I enjoy a lot and that make me happy. And uh, there was a bonus question, uh, which I think we'll, I'll put on at the first part of the video and maybe wrap it up towards the end, but um, which was uh, tell a story, you know, about listening and collecting music and, you know, why you like it and uh, what part about that brings you joy. And so, uh, at any rate, uh, I'm from Texas, like I said, and I, I lived in East Texas, uh, a little bit east of where I'm living now. Uh, in a place called Longview and uh, dad got transferred to uh, uh, West Texas which is about I don't know 300 miles west of here <clears throat> or a little bit more to a uh, small town uh, and uh, anyway I, I was happy to go because I just kind of you know I, I found that adventurous just to see something new but when we were living in Longview um, all my parents had was a uh, RCA, what was called a RCA Victrola, and uh, it wasn't a stereo, it just had one big speaker, I guess it was about a 10 inch speaker, and uh, you know you could stack records on top of that, it had a big spindle, and all, you, all it played was 45's. So growing up as a kid all I listened to was uh, 45 RPM's or the radio, that's all we had access to. But um, even even so, uh, I listened to that RCA Victrola quite a bit, and uh, bought a lot of 45s for it. Like uh, here's an early 45 I have by Haley Mills. Let's get together. It was taken from the Disney movie, The Parent Trap, and uh, I really like the song in it. And I actually had kind of a crush on Haley Mills too when I was a kid. You know that British accent and everything. But then, like, I liked, um, Here's Where Did Our Love Go by The Supremes. You know, I listened to uh, all the Motown hits. Here's another one called Baby Love by The Supremes. Um, I liked a lot of novelty songs, too. Uh, I didn't collect, you know, I couldn't buy all of them because they had a certain, you know, amount of money. But here's one by Roger Miller called Chug-a-Lug, 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 got a holler hidey ho. Um, here's one by the Hondells, I need to find a sleeve for it, called uh, Little Honda. It's talking about a motorcycle. First gear, it's alright. Second gear, hang right. Third gear, it's alright. Faster, faster, something like that. But it's by the Hondells. This is kind of another novelty song by Jimmy Dean, who <laughs> eventually made Sausage, but I think he he got his start with, uh, well, he was a singer, and this is Big Bad John about a big guy that was a miner in a coal mine. And then you had like hits like this uh, by uh, Chubby Checker, Limbo Rock, and then he did, uh, oh, what was the famous one he did? The twist, that's right. And he was a big, big teen guy, just like Chuck Berry and all the rest back in the day. Um, and then the, of course, the big thing that influenced me a lot was the Beatle Invasion. This is the 
one of their first famous 45s. Of course, like as a kid, I, I, uh, you know, really liked the Beatles and that whole Beatles invasion, British invasion thing, and uh, saw the Beatles when they were on Ed Sullivan. Happened to tune in that night. My parents liked to watch uh, Ed Sullivan variety show, and he would have, you know, a host of guests. And of course, saw the Beatles with uh, a lot of other people when they played that night, and was just sort of bowled over by the, uh, you know excitement and the uh, presentation that they uh, had with their band and uh, became a big fan ever since. Uh, here's one by uh, Manfred Mann. This isn't their uh, other famous hit which is uh, Do I Diddy Diddy but um, it's a good album. Here's another one called He's a Rebel by The Crystals, which is, I'm not sure if they were a British band or a uh, American band, but anyway, it wasn't until uh, 1965 that uh, on Christmas that my, be my, that my uh, mother and dad got me a uh, stereo, because they, they knew I just really loved music. They got me a Sears Silvertone because my mother worked at Sears at the time. And uh, here's a scientific view of what it looks like, <laughs> what it did look like. They they don't make them anymore, but uh, in Figure One you can kind of see where it was a uh, suitcase type affair, and at the top the, you could detach the speakers and you could like pull them out and move them. Like down here in this part, they would swing out, which mostly they just kept it this way. But they also came off these little hooks here, and you could like move them to each side of the room or whatever and uh, had the record changer in the middle that folded down and uh, most of the time it was folded down so I could hear music and stuff like that but uh, it was a really neat little record player that I loved for many years and uh, was the first record player stereo that I had that would allow me to play long playing albums and uh, one of the first albums that they gave me was this album here, which I still love today, and which still brings me joy, which is the Beatles 65 album. And uh, that's when I got uh, the stereo as well. So I had this Beatles album to listen to, and listen to it forever and ever, and you know, I played it on my stereo, and it sounded great. And it's still a great sounding, warm sounding uh, album today, I think. So after we moved uh, to the other side of Texas, I was still kind of collecting music and everything, and uh, was listening to uh, stuff like uh, the associations here, and this was about, uh, oh, and I think we moved in 66, and uh, so I was a teen in high school in these years, and uh, you either had like AM radio, which played the hits like Wendy here, or uh, you know you had the radio, or you'd go buy an album. And there weren't malls to speak of. Well, I think we did have a, a small mall there that uh, had a Montgomery Wards in it. But uh, I bought most of my albums from a uh, kind of a department store called TG and Y. But uh, you know, I'd list, I'd buy stuff like uh, the Association and uh, the monkeys and what have you but uh, one of the albums I bought way back then was this one here and uh, it's just one of those albums that brings me joy whenever I hear it if I'm in a uh, you know I wouldn't say bad mood but uh, whenever I put this on it uh, makes me happy I mean it's just one of those albums that uh, you know, I really, really enjoy. And uh, all the songs are real upbeat and the harmonies are there. And uh, I'd say their follow up, which I don't know if this was, I mean, I know it was released on album at one time, but I don't know that it's ever been re released. It may have been. This is the Beach Boy Smiley Smile. And it, it comes with uh, Smiley Smile and this uh, Wild Honey album is on it as well. Uh, so it's kind of got two albums on one. 
The only thing that I I didn't like about this CD, which I used to have the Smiley Smile record, um, was that uh, I really thought the mastering of this tape was a little bad, or was bad, is bad, but I still hang on to it because I just haven't seen uh, it remastered anywhere. But uh, it could have been recorded, I think, a little bit better than what they did. But anyway, this this is another album that brings me a lot of joy. In fact, they both do. But um, so after I started going to college, I went to uh, Texas Tech up in Lubbock, which wasn't too far from where we lived, and. Uh, I stayed at the dorm, you know, and the, the first dorm I stayed at was a rather <laughs> dismal type dorm. It was like painted army green walls and it was kind of a downbeat dorm, I guess you could say. Kind of just a twin bed and I didn't know anybody at, at college, you know, of course it's so big there with all the students. Uh, I really didn't know anybody there. I didn't know anybody there that was from my high school or anything until much later. But uh, the one bright spot about going there was there was a uh, a there was a uh, eight track and at the time I had eight tracks uh, there was an eight track uh, music store there and they also sold albums so it was across the street more or less from the university and uh, they had this eight track exchange that if you had an eight track and you wanted to trade it in you know you could do that or you could go in there and you had like a little eight track machine set up on top you could like all, well, he, he sold new and used, but he had a, a big selection of used 8-tracks and you could stick an 8-track in that machine and listen to it. And so that was pretty neat for those times. I mean, it was uh, almost like a listening station and uh, discount records or something, you know, back in the day. But you could actually, you know, preview ahead of time what music might sound like. It might give you some indication of whether you'd like it or not. So they had that, and then sometime later, there was a chain store, and I forget the name of it. It might have just been called Discount Records, but it was a chain store, and it, you know, it was a lot larger, um, and uh, it, it was brand new, and it opened up right across the street from the college, and uh, all along the strip there, and uh, of course, I had to go over there and see what they had. It was great. The guy running it was a real hip guy, you know, and the uh, music he'd always be playing there would be influencing me to play, you know, or to buy something, as the <laughs> as a lot of places like that do. But um, here are two records I bought in there. Uh, this is the uh, original Jackson Brown album. The original album kind of came with this textured uh, album cover. And uh, for a singer-songwriter album, it's a really beautiful album. In fact, uh, I'd say Jackson Brown's first four or five albums are all uh, really well uh, played and sung, and, and you know he, he d d paid a lot of attention to his lyrics and what have you. And uh, like I said, this is the uh, one of the original ones, kind of shaped like a old-style radiator uh, water bag. But uh, one of the other albums that he played in there that brings me a lot of joy was this one. I'd never heard of the Asylum Choir. This is Asylum Choir 2 with Leon Russell and Mark Benno. And uh, I was just in there looking at records one day and he, he put this on and played it and I immediately, you know, sort of fell in love with it. And uh, of course Leon Russell is a musician that has played with uh, Joe Cro Cocker and uh, you know he's made many albums. I have some of his other albums as well which I love just as well like uh, oh, Mad Dogs and the Englishmen or Leon Russell and the Shelter, uh, Shelter Choir and I like those albums just as well. They all remind me of uh, my days going up there to uh, Texas Tech but uh, this is a real fun album. Uh, it's got Sweet Home Chicago on it I think might have been the hit and I don't know if anything else, let's see, is on here that uh, was radio friendly back in the day, but it's a really neat little album. 
and I recommend his other albums as well. So that was one that uh, I really enjoyed back in the day. Uh, and so, oh, and here was another one that uh, I got almost overlooked because it was a uh, CD. But uh, when I was in college too, I ran into I uh, ran into the album Genesis, and uh, I don't know if I bought this one first or Selling England by the Pound, but uh, either way, they're both excellent albums. But I, I like this one just a little bit more than Selling England by the Pound. And every time I, I put it on, you know, it's like I don't know, like brings me joy. That's the best way to put it. It's just a wonderful album to me. And uh, I bought this when I was going to school up there as well. I think I'd read, like, I'd go over to the library and read, like, Stereo Review and uh, High Fidelity or whatever music magazines they may have. And I believe I'd read something about Genesis through one of those. It might even have been, like, Rolling Stone magazine, you know, or uh, Rolling Stone back in the day were talking about Genesis, and it kind of piqued my interest and. In, uh, I first bought their LP and then I eventually got got it on a CD. So that's another one of my favorite albums. But uh, like I said back in the day, um, when we first moved to West Texas, I was listening to more or less like pop albums like this. This is the Association, and then of course you know was listening to the Monkees. And there was a a guy next door to us, his name was John Shiflett. And uh, him, his mom and dad, his family was from uh, up around the Denver, Colorado area. And uh, somehow his dad, well his dad got transferred, he was in the military, and got transferred to uh, Big Spring because they had a uh, Air Force base there. And uh, John moved in next door to us, and uh, he was a real fun kid that me and my brother would hang out with and everything, get into all sorts of mischief and whatnot. And uh, but John really wasn't listening to music that much back then, and uh, I turned him on to a lot of different albums, and you know he liked stuff like The Association and The Monkees. You know he bought those. He bought the Beach Boys as well. He really liked the Beach Boys. And uh, I was listening to stuff like uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders, Spirit of 67. You know, it has the hit uh, Hungry on it and Good Thing. And then there were stuff like the Turtles, you know, and also the Hollies. As you can see, uh, love was everywhere back then. But, um, you know, and John liked a lot of these, these bands as, as well. But um, my sister had gotten married sometime, and my older sister got married in, uh, I think it was around 66. And uh, she moved up to Colorado as well. And so we took a vacation up there. And... Uh, we stopped along at like Colorado Springs and a few of the little tourist tourist areas. I think there's a place up there called Seven Falls or something like that. We went by there and we went to Boulder uh, on our way up to see my sister. And uh, we stopped in a little, little shop there in Boulder. It was kind of like a hippie place. and uh, But it was a record shop. I mean, it, you know, back in those days a lot of the places kind of look <laughs> hippie because that was the trend back then but um, we walked into a shop and uh, record shop and I was looking and looking and ran across this album here and it was like nothing I'd ever seen before I was like looking at the cover you know and the back of the cover and reading this text here and the only thing I could think of is like, what does this sound like? It says, freak out. And the back of it says, Susie Cream Cheese, what's got into you? And uh, I read this top part, which was, says it's written by Susie Cream Cheese. 
and uh, I just couldn't imagine what this would sound like so I'd put it back and I'd go look around a little bit more and then I'd come back to this album I'd pick it up again and I thought my gosh what does this sound like so I just had to buy it <laughs> I bought it and brought it home and I didn't like it at first this was back in uh, around 68 something like that I mean I liked a few of the songs on it like Hungry Freaks Daddy I mean that one was good there were some other ones that I liked on here but uh, it took me a long time to get into this one and it's still one of my favorite albums today because it kind of got me into Advent Guard music or music that's a little bit harder to get into uh, and that's kind of still the stuff I like today I mean I still like pop music, I still like uh, easy listening music, I still like, you know, rock and roll music, I mean I've got a lot of that stuff, but um, this is one of the albums that kind of got me started into listening to, to more difficult music that might take a little bit more music to get into, and you know, that's an experience in itself and it's something I still like doing today, or one of the reasons I still like music I kind of like it because it's exploratory, you know. I always want to hear something fresh, and, or something that sounds fresh to me, and uh, you know, something that's a little bit harder to get into has a little bit more lasting power for me. Like say if you compare this to this Hollies, which I still like today, I mean, uh, you know, you like these songs immediately almost, you know, for one reason, the you know a lot of the singles were played back then, but the uh, you know, same thing with the Turtles, you know, and, and any of these bands. But you know, something like this just takes a little bit longer to get into. And uh, anyway, I was talking about that friend that lived next door to us. His name was John Shiflett, and uh, you know, I turned him on to uh, the uh, Hollies and he came over one day and I was playing Freak Out by the Mothers and uh, he says you know David I really appreciate you turning me on to all these music you know I, I love the Beach Boys and I, I really love the Monkees and everything they're such a great band but uh, and he picked up this album and he goes but what do you like that for it's just ooh, it's just it's kind of like bitter medicine <laughs> When he came over, it was just kind of like, ooh, why would you even like that? He, he didn't get it. But I could understand where he's coming from. It's, it's, uh, it's not an easy album to get into, and it's so far from, say, something like The Beach Boys. I often wondered if John ever did really, I mean, he moved away oh, a couple of years after he'd been there, back to Colorado. And uh, I wonder if he ever did get, get into The Mothers. I tried looking looking him up one time when me and my brother went up to Colorado and uh, I talked to his mother there and he was at work at the time and uh, but he never called me back I think John had since gotten married and everything and and was working and you know how we all do move on with our lives but uh, often wondered if John ever got into the mothers or if he ever picked up a mother's album or just never could get into them, but I would be really interested to know, you know, what he's doing these days and what he's listening to and all that type of thing. So, in any way, there you have it, Steve. Uh, hope I shed some light on what I like and, you know, what are some of my favorite albums and what albums bring me joy. And, uh, I wish you good luck with your uh, 200 subs contest. It's uh, I really enjoy your channel, and I hope you continue to uh, uh, do it. And uh, I hope you get a lot more followers because it's you certainly deserve it. Uh, I like your enthusiasm, and uh, hope you continue along with the rest of the people in BC to uh, you know enjoy their music and get joy from their music. So uh, I just wanted to, you know, contribute and support your channel, and uh, I wish everybody in the VCA a good day. We'll talk to you later.